Greetings and salutations, everybody. It's Mecha GM, and uh, we're back with Dungeons and Dragons. Um, yeah, except this time Hooray. we're doing a game I'm running now. Um, mm -hmm. but we're not doing Fifth Ed. Oh no, we're playing Fourth Edition. Yeah, because I've not run it in a long time, and uh, Eric wanted something combat oriented for a bit. <laughs> Eric needed to hit things. <laughs> it's the OG for for Mecha GM campaigns on that have been broadcast on stream. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say, involving I mean, our group. I, I, I have I, I have DM'd every edition of Dungeons and Dragons now. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, you popped into existence in 2010 or whenever it was I met you. So. Eh, it's not so, far from the truth. Christ, oh, has okay. it been that long? Yes, it has. <laughs> uh, I'm an old man. Eric, we've known each other for over 20 years at this point. I'm an old man. Yes. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, uh, let's give this a little pressies for the campaign setting and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. Um, so <clears throat> in, in, insert Mecca doing a dramatic reading here. Hang on. Hmm. By dramatic reading, I'm, I'm reading the, the, the notes here. Mm. <clears throat> the tales tell of a time when the peoples of the world lived in magnificent, gigantic cities. All had that what they needed and most could pursue the sort of life they desired. But... Something happened. What it was exactly varies from storyteller to storyteller. But what all agree upon is that there was a catastrophe that laid the ru world to ruin. The peoples of the world were forced to scatter to the distant corners of the land to find ways to subsist and survive. Eventually, much time had passed, and people started to explore the fallen lands where once the mighty cities stood. What these intrepid folks found was a massive labyrinthine complex that stretched far below the surface of the land. While the labyrinth was an exceedingly dangerous place, many relics of the distant past were found within. Eventually, one intrepid group of explorers found the inner sanctum of the complex, and within found a potent relic of the past, and some lost knowledge that allowed them to retreat, retire from exploration, and found their own settlement with some important advances. And then, some time later, another labyrinth was found, and it was explored, and a sanctum was found, and the pattern continued and repeated. It has been nearly a century since the first labyrinth has been was found, and another new labyrinth has been discovered in the Fallen Lands. An adventure, as adventurous explorers gather to explore the new complex in search of relics, power, and wealth. And we find a new group of adventurers at this, this well, a new group of potential adventurers outside this labyrinth. Um, I will go over some of the nearby, um, uh, nearby cities and such in a moment, but, uh, We'll be starting out in... Uh, I should probably change scenes. That would help. Boop. We'll be starting out in... Uh, this is a sort of over, overview of the ruined... What looks like sort of a ruined... The, the, this labyrinth looks like the sort of... On the surface, at least on the surface, maybe there's a complex below. Almost all of them have complexes below. Uh, there's at least one that was like a gigantic, super gigantic, like what looks like kind of like a you know, classic... Super gigantic tower thing. Totally not a skyscraper. Uh mm. Dude, I'm going to find an 8-track tape in one of these. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and you, I don't think so. I think the actual tape would have rotted away by now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it looks like a ruined sort of fortress city thing. Um, there's a moat outside that has uh, liquid in it. It Looks is good. Yes, it, 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 it could be water. Doesn't seem like it, it sort of has a sickly pale greeny glow to it almost oh shit yeah mountain dew <laughs> <laughs> um there is sorry with the ball and just secret of mountain dew so as, so one of the things that has happened over the time with most of the labyrinths at least according as from what you have heard and this seems to be the case is as time as the labyrinth is explored and more people go in and people come out and all this stuff uh like sort of settlements build up around the labyrinths um there's people show up to sort of, you know, well, there are people here. We can, if we're near there, we can sell the people who are exploring the labyrinth stuff. And we can buy stuff from them. And stuff. So, like, settlements built up around them. Um, this labyrinth not is, is just been discovered, basically. And uh, there's a, there, someone's built a tavern. It is called the Black Briar Tavern. Mm. Um, it is run by a pair of, uh, by, two, by two folk, a, uh, who, uh, 
they're co- it's co- two co- co-owners, the barkeep and the chef slash brewer. The barkeep is a very large orc. The the chef and brewer is a very surly is a somewhat surly grumpy dwarven woman. They very obviously are, are good friends, but they also uh, shout at each other a lot. Gotcha. Like well, any good marriage. They're not technically married. <laughs> <laughs> but they do argue like an old married couple. <laughs> um, all right, so the nearest the nearest sort of cities are all based around labyrinths, basically, that have been, that have been explored and, quote, conquered. Uh, the nearest three are Tharhest, which was um, uh, was actually con- was it was part one of the most recent ones that was actually fully explored. Uh, the Archwizard Eri Thar uh, was the one who emerged from it, and she is now built a, built basically a wizard tower there outside of it. And uh, she technically rules the uh, rules Tharhest, but uh, she put together a ruling council for the town so that she could focus on magical research because you know it's like yeah, but running like a city's Boring. <laughs> yeah, I'll. I, I'm in. Sh- I know. I'm in charge. Technically, I'll make decrees occasionally. You guys do the day to day ruling stuff. <laughs> um, there's the Silver Forest, which is a there's labyrinth. There was near a large forest. Uh, unshockingly, that one for some, a group of elves, basically the ones who took that took that one. That was con- that was cleared out about thirty years ago. Um, and they basically a city is built up sort of in the both in the forest and outside the outside the labyrinth. Um, and then there is Underdeep, which, uh, is basically the, a bunch of primarily subterranean species like dwarves, goblins, some orcs, kobolds, etc., uh, gnomes, uh, basically they've all taken up residence in the labyrinth itself, actually, uh, after they was cleared out. Uh, it is now ruled over by a council comprised of nine counselors from each of which represents one of the nine districts of Underdeep. Uh, each district has their own rules for how they choose their their counselor, and they have their own sort of they basically all have their own sort of slightly set different sets of rules and laws in their area. There's some overarching laws, but yeah. Um, and those are the three nearest uh, major settlements. You could, if you needed to go to one, you could get there by, by if you over in like a week or so by uh, by traveling on foot. But that is sort of the background info of the area. Where is my? There it is. Nope, wrong thing. That one. That. Nope. I clicked a button I didn't want to click. And it's going to annoy me. Go away. Boof. All right. So I'm going to switch. Switch. Uh, and whoop. All right. So tavern interior. Evening. <laughs> The three of you find yourselves in a, in the, in the basic, you guys, you're all, you've all decided to be, to, to explore the labyrinth for your own reasons. Um, what you have found, it, what you have, what you have found is that there are a number of sort of independent, uh, sort of adventurer types. Uh, mm. anyone that's basically been, there are several of the major cities, major sort of cities and such across the, that have been built up around the various labyrinths. Uh, are will probably send their own teams to investigate the labyrinth. However, they all have basically worked out a treaty. On, they've worked out a sort of treaty to of like a, to when they can send their when they can send people. It's a new, no one major settlement gets an advantage. Right. But this does not apply to independent adventurers. Ah, uh, okay. So independent adventurers can go in early if they want to. No, no, no and no one's right. really going to stop them because why? They have less resources. They're probably just going to get themselves killed. Maybe you guys will. But uh, you, the three of you, have noticed that there are se- several. Uh, there have been basically every. There are a couple of other adventuring groups in the tavern, but they seem to be fairly established teams. Mm. Um, from what you're hearing from the group of kobolds over at another table, they're not all of their group. It sounds like most of a small kobold tribe has decided that they're going to take take on to try, take over this labyrinth for themselves. Okay, which you know, honestly, not the worst plan. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what if we just go in as an our entire tribe just goes in, all able bodied, it's all the ones who are able capable of being able bodied adventurers. It's like you know, that's not a terrible idea. 
Um, there's some other groups sort of here and there of different groups, but they all seem to be throwing that's, the bodies at the problem. Eventually, it all work itself out. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Virgil's hearing that. It's like we tried that once, it didn't work. <laughs> But the three of you, basically, there's, there's, you know, the three of you find yourselves at at least in the same general vicinity in the in the tavern. Mm. Uh, other individuals note, um, so there, there is the a very the 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 bartender who is the one of the co-owners um, whose name I actually have written down because I'm not terrible. Mm. Uh, yes, Gareg Halffang. You can guess why he's called Halffang. Right. <laughs> uh, he's actually. A, a little shorter than average for a, for a, for a full blooded orc, but uh, he's kind of built like a dwarf. Mm. <laughs> he's almost Very like stout. he gives an impression of being about as broad as he is tall. <laughs> mm. Um. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. He also he is also wearing a jaunty eye patch. <laughs> oh, that's cute. It is, it is, in fact, jaunty. (laughs) One assumes it is not simply for the sake of appearing jaunty, however. It might not be. It might be. It might not be. On the eye patch is written, don't ask me about the eye. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Right. You, the three of you, have been here long enough to to have seen the uh, the 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 co-owner, who's a is a dwarven woman by the name of Theodona Blackshield. Sorry, Theodona Mm -hmm. Blackshield. She generally hangs out in the back, either cooking or brewing beer. Mm. Um, the other person you have no the the one person you've noticed here who is who's new, sort of stands out, kind of like a sore thumb. Mm. Like almost everybody here looks like sort of the adventurer type. Like you know you're you know a bit bedraggled. You know they've you know well worn gear, armed etc. There's a fancy looking gnome here. We're in we're in very nice clothing. Um well r- relatively for the for the for this place, very nice clothing. Um he's got sort of wild white hair, uh very neatly trimmed, very very neatly uh coiffed waxed mustache. Um the other thing you note about him is that he sort of he definitely has a he he has with him a very large satchel of what looks like a sort of of tools, hmm. um, and anyone can ever you all can give me a perception check if you would like. All yeah, right, I will go ahead and get that. Go sheets. Let's see what perception is. There it is. Uh, I, I rolled a natural 20. Well, all right, 17 for <laughs> Virgil. I, I will get to you in a second. Do, do you want to roll one, Eric? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to do that in this uh slash roll i mean you can do yeah. that or you could i think there's a I, there might be a button on yours for, on okay, this. so if you open the character sheet and you yeah. go to the the square to the left of the skill you just click that and it'll roll it uh that'll probably be easier from now on i'll remember that going forward then again if i rolled a nat 20 on this i might just do no, it no, you do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go a 14 all right um okay so uh Eric, I'm going to start with you. Mm-hmm. What you know, what you notice about him beyond the the obvious, um, he definitely the, the the gnome definitely seems. It he definitely feels a bit out of place, but he also has that. He also looks like he's uh, trying to kind of phrase it. Uh, he doesn't carry himself like he doesn't carry himself like like a like a like a sort of a Ponzi aristocratic type. He sort of he sort of reminds you some of the sort of like the craftsmen you've met over the years. Okay. There's just something about him that you can't put your finger on it. Oh, he's middle class. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil, um, you notice that he does have about his bot about his person uh, some of the some tools you recognize that are similar to the tools you you use. You think he's probably an artificer of some sort. Uh He has. He definitely has. Like the, he has some tools that you see for like for making stuff and such. Um, Corbin. On addition to all of that, you you get you get all of this also. 
You yeah, notice yeah. that there are his his finger the sort of his fingertips are slightly stained in the way that you've seen al- various alchemists often do. Okay. He's you're you're one hundred percent certain he's an alchemist on top of everything else. Okay. And he has all of his hair and his eyebrows. Hmm. So he's probably actually a good one. Or, yeah, le- or at least a cautious <laughs> one. <laughs> right. Or he's, he yeah, or he's out, just, yeah. or he's just uh, younger than he looks. <laughs> <laughs> so he just started out and he hasn't blown himself up yet. <laughs> but yes, he has not he has not blown himself up yet. Well done. Or at least not recently. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. He hasn't blown himself up in the last couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but still, pretty good. <laughs> you, you notice he, he sort of has, as when he, after he walked in, he's spent a little time talking to basically every group of adventurers here. And has sort of seemed to walk away looking a little bit disappointed from, from each of the tables. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, I am going to uh, take all of this in, and then I'm going to uh, turn uh, to the barkeeper. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say, excuse me. Uh, Oi, all you want? Quart of milk, please? Milk? Yeah. Hang on. The donor? We got someone who would like to, who wants to order a milk to drink. You're shouting back. Ugh. Yeah, you can get a pitch. You, you can go, you can get, you can get some from back here. Right. One minute. <laughs> he sort of looks yeah, you up and down I'm... like, okay, milk? All, all right. Uh, I am wearing like a full body cloak, uh, right? Too. So the orc sort of, sort of, sort of, the, the you know, Garag gets sort of, sort of stomps off back through the door to the to to, to we, we basically takes it t- takes a large tankard and stomps off to the back. You hear sort of, you hear grumbling, things rattling. Comes back out, clomps it down. Eh, five coppers, kid. Certainly, sir. And uh, I'll uh, very carefully count out the money in my pocket. Five coppers is, is, is would that seem like a lot for this? Like, are, are we are we in full gold rush it's surcharge not, it is, yet? It is not cheap, but it is also not a complete ripoff. Ah, also, it's, uh, it's it's very, also very clearly not something he would normally sell for beverages. It's probably used mostly in cooking. So we're not in full capitalism mode here. Well, well good it's, it's a case of there's probably a lot less milk than there's the everything else they, they serve to drink here because right it's it's they only got also, one goat it's, right it's, it's also <laughs> also a, it's also a hazard zone you know yeah so. but yes there's it's a lot of sort of <laughs> people like the kobolds don't seem to pay any of mine but like there are a couple of, like dwarves at the table sort of look over like what by the way sir uh, I'm not yeah. to ask you I'm not to ask you a question yeah sure. Uh, you, you're uh, you're in your in your friend or the proprietors of this establishment. Uh, yep. You ever you ever seen any creatures that come up out of the uh, the labyrinth that's nearby? Not that I've seen, but uh, we've only been here long. We've we've only been here long enough to build the tavern up and such. We've not right. been there been here that long, and there's no one's really done any exploring yet. Right. Y'all are it's sort of the seen. first. Uh, you all are the first groups to show up here, so, uh, you know. Well, I thank, you, I thank you kindly, and thank you for the milk. Uh, you're very welcome. I, I hope it is satisfactory. While this is going on, Virgil is eyeing the uh, the uh, gnomes, like... Is 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 a gnome here, or is, does he have his things here, or is he just like he's here got at the a bar? he's got a satchel with him that looks like it's got some tools in it. He doesn't have, doesn't have a doesn't have like a full uh, like a full like you know set of gear or such. They might be stored somewhere. Uh, yeah. He walks up to the he walk, but he does walk up to the. Uh, he first walk. He walks up to the 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 uh, the, the, the 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 bar and sort of. You see him lean over and sort of says, "My good, my my good sir, might I have um, hmm, do do you carry wine?" <sighs> <laughs> I take it's for cooking then. Very well, uh, a pint of your best then. 
The orc nods. I, the orc sort of looks at him, nods, picks up, picks up, picks up a, a, a tankard and you know, <laughs> pulls a pint, sets it down. A pint of cooking wine, just like no, okay, it's, it's not. It's not. It is not wine. <laughs> <laughs> he changed his mind. It's like ah, uh, he has that look of aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> right. Um. Uh. The, he looks at him and says, five coppers. Uh, very well, sir. For your best? We only have the one type of ale at the moment. The don only has, has limited ingredients and ale is the easiest thing to brew. Ah, very well. Chink. Thank you, my good, my good sir. He picks it up, sort of, and he starts walking over to the area you guys, you three are sitting in. Right. Do I mind if I join you, you capital fellows? Right, have a seat then. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Sits down. <laughs> so I did that whole sequence just so like, oh man, I, I, I turned you a bit of attention to myself. Oh man, this guy. <laughs> this guy though. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, capital to meet you all. I am Pobar Glimmerroot. You, I assume you, I, 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 I wonder if you have heard of me before. Uh, I'm no, going you, to say No. No. <laughs> He has his air of yes. He is Just very. He, he thinks he's more famous than he is. Yeah. What you have not heard of Glimmer at Foundries? Well, I'm sorry, sir. I just uh, this is the first time I'm leaving home. You see. So. Ah, I see. I'm, my apologies. Uh, perhaps the word has not traveled quite as far as I thought it might have. Ah, oh, well. No, uh, well, I, I I live just around the band, but uh, all right, never mind. Virgil kind of pops in. He's like. Sorry, I'm 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 out of New Veni, and like ah, I don't know. Fascinating, but yes, I am Polar yeah, Glimmerich, uh, artificer, boundaries, alchemist. Right? Sorry, what was that, Eric? My bad, I didn't mean to. Foundries, right? Yes, Glimmer yeah, Foundries. Make, uh, make good shit for fighting, then. Uh we have made some. We we we've recently started making uh, various weapons. Yes, I don't have many. Right. Of, sorry. All right, you got my ears then. Ah, yes. Well, uh, I am both an artificer. I'm an artificer, alchemist, and inventor. Uh, soon to be wo- known the world over for my inventions. I might have a proposal. Right, so you're making shoot for a proper massacre then? Now I'm definitely listening. Possibly, but we'll see. I mean, it's I. I'm mostly just inventing things that I think are interesting and might be helpful to people. And several people express interest in uh, weapons of. Uh, and weapons and such, so I have dabbled in those. He sets his, he, sets his, he takes a sip from his pint, smacks his lips. Quite passable. That's a dwarven ale, I believe. Anyways, ah, oh right, the, uh, yes. Anyways, um, so I might have a proposition for you three if you are interested, perhaps. Virgil's ears kind of like perk up. He's like, I'm listening. Ah, excellent. You see, it, your reaction to my uh, telling you who I am and such is, is sadly seems to be fairly commonplace around these parts, and I need to spread word of my of the foundry around a bit. You three look like you are here to possibly investigate the labyrinth yourselves. Yes. Well, I was hoping to. That's the plan. Excellent, excellent. So. What I'm thinking, uh, what, what I, the offer I would like to make to you is if you. Perhaps you three might be interested in, I don't know, maybe working together. I don't know. But uh, if if you would, if you, if I was able to get a group together, and no one seems to have been interested. Everyone else seems to have not doesn't be interested. I'd be willing to help uh, help supply you, help supply a small adventuring group uh, with some of my more portable wares, at least at the moment. Um, and uh, in exchange uh, for testing of said testing of uh, testing of said wares and advertising them to other adventurers if they work well and if. They need improvement uh, notes on where they where things could be improved. All right, so you want us to go down there, see if your shit explodes in our faces, and then tell you if it does or not. Well, I mean, you don't. Ha- I mean, if it's mostly to if you if it, the items come in useful, that'd be great. Tell other people about it. If they don't, I'd like to know why they didn't come in useful. They shouldn't. Do- All right. They shouldn't explode. Oh no! <laughs> not the stuff I brought this time, at least. 
he sips his, he, he proceeds to he proceeds to sip his sip his uh, his, 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 his ale. I'm just gonna do a quick insight on this guy. Absolutely, yeah, like Virgil's very much like like this guy. Um, oh. okay, a twenty-seven. I see. Uh, all right. Twenty-seven. Someone's good at this. <laughs> my, my folks had these fancy talking types come around all the time, trying to see them all these inventions and stuff to say so on and so on, improve their productivity and such. So you gotta be, you gotta be a good judge of character. Yep. Uh, and uh, kind of thing. he seems very confident in his own stuff. Okay. He may have an overflated opinion of himself, however. Sure. But like, legitimately, not... it's stuff that he wants to test, but he thinks he's fairly certain it should work. Right, right. Okay, it's it's something he believes in. It's not like he's okay. Okay. Yeah, he's not a. He's, he's not, not a com- idiot, but he's not a flim flam man. Yes, he is not. He may not be complete. He he is mostly on the up and up. Mostly, he might be a bit of a crackpot and might be a bit a bit. He might be a little bit insane. He might be a little bit arrogant, but he's also mostly on the up and up. He genuinely, you know, thinks his products are probably going to be good. Ah, excellent then. Um, very well. So well, let me let me check my uh, what's, my supplies then that I brought with me. Um, I do have ah yes 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 yes. All right. Uh, I've got these. He sets out a several what look like basically sort of they look like whetstones honestly. Uh, these are um, these are these are alchemically treated whetstones. They should. Give your weapons a most fortuitously sharp edge. Ah. Yes. Um, I also have with me... Um, ah, yes. Uh, sets, sets on some vials of... Uh, sets on some vials of red liquid. Uh, these are... Uh, these are the uh, some healing potions I've made recently that might be of, uh, might be of assistance. Um, We're just definitely looking at those. Yes, let's see. Um... I have dubbed this one uh, uh, the Potion of Iron Skin. Ah. And um, <laughs> let's see, what else do I have? Uh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, these alchemically treated um, arrowheads that can be affixed to any, to, to, be affixed to any type of uh, arrow or crossbow bolt. Uh, they are extra sharp. Hmm. Oh, sorry. No, the, 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 sorry. Very, no, uh, the, those, yeah. these are not extra sharp. Sorry, my bad. Um, these uh, should, in theory, um, they they uh, should act somewhat like uh, a flint and steel and give off a spark of light and flame when they they strike their target. Mm. Uh, I can't send all of these then with you, but like uh, oh. because I do need to I do need to hang on some hang on to you. But your issue, you may take. I would say I don't have much of the. I only have one, the one iron, the one potion of iron skin. Uh, but uh, each of you might, if you will, if you'd like, you may take, uh, say, I don't know, two two items each. Okay, so Bridget so going to up a um a uh, a whetstone. Okay. Very well. And All get right. a proper look. Uh, then I, I'm going to. It looks um, like it. Honestly, looks like a perfect, a, a, like a legitimately well-made whetstone. Like, all right. But it definitely has sort of a weird sort of. It 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 does have a weird sort of out, sort of a uh, sort of almost oily sheen to it. But it's not doesn't feel oily. Okay. So I'll uh, I'll unlimber a, a hand axe and start giving it a, a few passes. Okay. So, Virgil going to take up one of those arrowheads and, and give him a quick look. Do we want to do like a, since he is sort of in the business of this. You can give me an arcana check if you'd like. All right, let's do an arcana check then. Oh, terrible rolls. 14. Uh, it has definitely been alchemically treated. Um, you do see, a, you see substances sort of, sort of roughly equivalent to like, you know, It sort of seems like a mixture of what would uh, sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal. Sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> Something <laughs> along those lines. Virgil, 
puts that down. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm not going to try. Like, these are a little dodgy. And it, it looks at the healing potion. Oh, no, it's very stable unless, it's stri- unless it strikes something hard very very solidly sudden- and suddenly. This is referring it, to the arrowheads? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Corbin's going to quietly take one of the whetstones and one of the potions. Okay. Thank you kindly. You're very welcome. <laughs> yeah, Virgil will, will, will take um, one of the potions. She's like, maybe next time about the arrowheads. Oh, very I, well, I, very I'm, well. I'm, 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 he, he kind of was just to his own, like, tricked out ah, crossbow. Hey, fellow art- artificer, I understand, I understand. No problem, sir. <laughs> oh, yes, might I have your I names, mean, by the way? I, I, I'm Virgil. Virgil, excellent. A pleasure to meet you, my dear sir. Uh, by the way, if, if you want to give a description of yourself for the yeah. audience and for the other players, that'd be great. Uh, Virgil is a is a small uh, rat henge yokai. He's a so you know he's a he's a, a little rat guy, little but he's he is wearing uh, some very similar to his uh, image. He's got some nice traveling robes robes on. He's got his, his big bulging backpack full of. Artificer stuff. He's he he looks a little bit out of place. Like he hasn't done this before. Um, first neck half grin is um. It's a good name. It's a good six, name. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's about a uh, um six eight, a six foot eight uh, inch tall orc. Um, broad of shoulder, broader of waist. <laughs> Um, he's wearing like a, a long male coat with like spiked pauldrons and heavy gauntlets and uh, a helmet with a spike on the top and a, a fur um, rough around the outside. He is covered in lots of like, uh, his face has like more than a few like small scars and a particularly nasty one that comes up from his, uh, uh, the left corner of his mouth and up underneath the, the rim of his helmet, giving him the, uh, the half grin moniker because it's always he's always looks like he's sort of sneering at people whether or not he means to or not. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm playing Corbin Lightfoot. Uh, he uh, he comes from a family of halflings. Uh, he's also six foot four inches tall and uh, is full of razors. Uh, <laughs> uh, most of his features currently are obscured by the uh, full body cloak that he is wearing. Uh, but uh, there, you can probably make out some uh, dark, silvery skin uh, beneath the hood of his cloak. Uh, the reason for his appearance is that uh, for a lot of his life, uh, people have uh, not really reacted well to Corbin's appearance because he is unlike anything that uh, they have encountered before. The reason that he is uh, going to the labyrinth is to see if he can find others who are like himself. Family of halflings. It's, insert the scene from Kung Fu Panda Two. Will pose like, turns out I'm adopted. It's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> Tiger's just like, your father's a duck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, very well. Very well. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Corbin, uh, Grishnak, and uh, Virgil. I do appreciate it. Very well. Uh, yes, I would love to hear if these. Any, uh, no one's interested in the potion of, of skin of the skin uh, skin of iron. Oh, very well. Uh, let's set these things in here. Notes. Yes, because having iron skin would be most unusual. <laughs> I see. Sounds itchy. Very well. Note it down. Sounds itchy. Iron skin <laughs> unusual. Very well. Grab this tankard. This is all very useful feedback. Thank you very much. Mm, yes, yes. Perhaps yes. you should you should rectify it as an iron fortifying potion. Mm, possibly. I'll think on that. I should also investigate to see if it actually is potentially itchy. That might be unfortunate. Could interfere with the, the uh, people's you know people in a tense situation if they uh, if they're itching. That would be bad. Yes, very bad. Mm, indeed. That would be awful if your like, your skin just turns Excuse to me. metal. You need to scratch. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Excuse me, sir. Make sure I understood you correctly there. You're not aware of if the potion makes people feel itchy before? Not that I've heard, no. So the other people who've tried have never told you? Not that I've heard, no. Yeah, They did not tell me that it caused them to itch, no. Okay, you actually did say other people, so... Yes. Oh, I've had... I've had I've, these have all been tested at least once, yes. All 
but not you know, in the not if, but not in optimal high intensity situations. That's why I need so adventures. So what's the, the iron skin supposed to do then? Oh, it's supposed to give you give. It's supposed to make your skin as hard as iron to make you to protect you more in in dangerous situations. It seems to last a reasonably a reasonably long time, not not a super long time. It only lasts it lasts a few minutes at least. For it allows you to get you through a difficult situation, potentially. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll All right, it. very well, sir. Grishnak, thank you. I do appreciate that. I will tell you what the actual what, the, what these all actually do in a minute <laughs> mechanically. <Right. laughs> um, with an asterisk, I'll say. <laughs> all right. Um, very well. Very well. Um, all right. So, uh, as an aside, very quickly, the healing potions you drink them, they heal you for ten hit points. All right. Okay. Uh, there may be there, there these. This all may be other effects happen when you drink when you use the items. I'm not going to tell you what that is yet. These are all experimental. <laughs> uh, the whetstones you use it if you use a whetstone the wep, if you use a whetstone on a weapon, uh, at, at, if you use a whetstone on a weapon until uh, for the for that weapon's next attack it gets plus one to hit. Ah, oh, okay. Actually, for the next encounter it gets plus one to hit. Sorry, my bad. Uh, but it is uh, if you actively use it enough to actually imply the effect, it is uh, it, it's a these are one use items. Okay. Uh, afterwards, it is just a normal whetstone. <laughs> you don't break the whetstone, but you use up the uh, the alchemical uh, loadout. Gotcha. Loadout, yeah. Uh, yeah the iron skin, up, the iron skin potion. Squeeze out, you squeeze out the sharp juices that are inside. Yes, that, yeah. basically. <laughs> uh, the iron skin potion, uh, basically. Uh, actually, is there? I forget if there's actually an iron. If there's actually an iron skin potion in fourth ed, actually, let me double check that. I know what I, I you know what doesn't matter. I'm, it's it's a potion. Uh, basically, you spend a healing surge. You get plus one to your AC and uh, a surge worth of temporary temporary hit points until the end. For a surge worth of temporary hit points, the AC bonus lasts for the encounter. Very nice. Okay. Um, I think that's so. Yeah, it unsurpri- it, it it's a lot like uh, Ash's cu- uh, resistive admixture, basically. Okay. It's similar, but you get the AC and the temp hit points up front. But yet, but you have to spend a surge to to to. You basically drink the potion and spend a surge when you do it. Okay. Um. So it, it's it's potent, and uh, as an aside, the the if you did for 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 if you did take the crossbow bolts, uh, the basically the the arrowheads, or bolt heads, I guess. Uh, they basically added d six fire damage for the for that for the for that for that arrow. Mm. Boom. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, as somebody who's who has come from Deadlands, I, I have a, a very strong feeling about missing more than one invention in a roll. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, as a Skaven player, I feel like you should add all the inventions to a roll. <laughs> just saying, I've had bad things happen when I used a, like a Gatling shotgun loaded with Armor piercing slugs and a laser sight <laughs> <laughs> did not work out. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Listen, you either kill the target or it doesn't matter to you anymore. That is the mad scientist credo. Yes. <laughs> uh, eventually, a uh, a younger a you that's a a younger the the barmaid comes out to take your take orders for for me for food. Uh, she is. It's very clear that she she's related to uh, the the co owner. Um, mm. She's very she's very clearly th- th- she related to Thedon in some way. She looks similar, but younger. She might be her daughter, might be her younger sister, might be a cousin. But she walks through and says, "All right, all right, what do you want to eat?" And by the way, you're uh, since you're all you you've all paid up front for your night at the the tavern at the oh, at okay. your night here. Yeah. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And meals are included with the price for the room. So y'all you got chick y- y'all got chicken and waffles. Waffles. Um, all right. I'll I'll have I'll have to ask uh, Thedona if she can make this waffle stuff. But we do have chicken, yes. 
Her, she's like, just me some cheese and fruit, please. Cheese and fruit, very well, sir. Uh, we have a lovely chicken stew that that uh, Thedona's making tonight. Um, addition, she lists off a few other, a few other sort of, you know, uh, we've got uh, some very good sausage and several excellent cheeses and a very, very, very hearty bread. Right, huge pile of the sausages and some of the bread. Very well, sir. And would you like the and chicken? Mustard. If, and oh, uh, of course, sir. That that comes with the sausage. Right, proper then. <laughs> um, and uh, would you like the chicken stew then, sir? I'll see if she can make if she knows these waffle things though. Uh, you got dumplings? Ah, uh, she looks at. She has that look of. She thinks she's heard of those. I'll ask. Right. Hang on a second. If I. I I will I will put these put their orders in first and I'll come back and let you know if we have we have dumplings. One moment. Just just going through my roller desk decks of uh, southern food that I'm familiar <laughs> with throughout you know my life. Right. <laughs> Step, she steps in the back. Oi, Thedona! <laughs> she lists off the orders. And you hear sort of mumbling and you sort of You hear a waffles! No, 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 dump, no, dumplings I've heard of. Yep, yep, no, I can do those. He wants dumplings with the stew. All right, that works. The barmaid comes back. Ah, uh, yes, she can provide dumplings if you'd like. It'll be a little bit longer, though. She has to make the uh, make the, the dough. Oh, that's all right. Thank you very much. Very well. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a yes on the dumplings, uh, stew and dumplings. <laughs> she hollers to the back, and then she wanders over to one of the other tables. Um... Pobar orders uh, basically cheese, sausage, and 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 a small amount of bread. And but other than that, he sort of he seems very very sort of uh, he seems to basically at this point having concluded the the uh, I've, I've 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 got people to 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 help me out with this thing. He's now diving into his notes, and you see him scribbling furiously as and taking sips of beer occasionally. Anne says hi. By the way, ah, hello, Anne. Hello. They say hi. Ah, yes, yes, yes. All right, and um, do, 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 do. all right. It was a uh, Krishnak, Corbin, Virgil. Yes. All right. Da, 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 da. All righty. Yes. Um. Very well. Later on, food is brought out, etc. Um. If there's any questions you'd like to ask uh, Pobar, or if you want to uh, do other anything else you'd like to do, now is the time. Virgil's being like very shy and like he's not used to going through the motions here, so he's just kind of like keeping to himself, even with like the other members of the party at the moment, because he doesn't want to be like the weird guy. <laughs> okay. So these work uh, on one weapon. What you sharpen proper, right? Uh, yes, yes. It, it, it's uh, right. the, unfortunately I've not found a way to permeate the entire whetstone with the, the alchemical solution yet. I'm working on that. But a very good right. question. And, uh, Sorry, I did not make that more clear. My, my, that is my fault. I should note that. No, down. No, I, I, I just want to make sure I'm understanding how this uh, shite works. Oh no, no, no. That is excellent. I, I, I approve the, I approve of the questioning. It's, it's. Good habit. Now the the blowing up arrow things, like uh, yes. I grabbed those if I had a bow, but I don't. Right. But uh, you think you could work something that you could add uh, like some sort of like uh, thing you could spear on, like say a uh, hand axe for throwing, or Ooh. even like uh, a proper melee weapon. That's an excellent idea. I should I should investigate that. Scribbles furiously in his book. Ooh ooh ooh! That sparks some wonderful ideas. Yes. That's an interesting choice of words. Oh yes, more com a combustible ointment for uh, no ointment's not the right term. When an ointment is something you apply to the skin. You don't want that to be combustible. No. <laughs> well, it will be applied to the skin just indirectly. Well, sure, yes, but that's no, not no, it's getting in underneath the skin because you're hacking in through there. Um, yes, that, that I, I boy, that's a thing. You could figure out something what can um, what explodes when it contacts blood. So once it gets in there, it uh, makes their blood explode. <laughs> I am Grishnek. I'm here to be your war crimes counselor. <laughs> Pobar has this this warring look of intellectually fascinated by the idea and mildly horrified by the idea simultaneously. 
It's like, ooh, that's an interesting, that's an in- interesting al- alchemical challenge. Also, that's horrifying. Virgil is just looking at. Uh, was it Krishnak? Krishnak, yes. yeah. Krishnak. He's, and he's just like shaking his head. He's like, no, no. We don't want. Okay, maybe we do want to scare people out of the dungeon, but still. <laughs> <laughs> what? You don't think it would work? Like uh, the blood's too sticky or something? Oh. We don't want this place to get the reputation for, like, it's war crimes. Well, I mean. I mean, that wouldn't. Don't see how that could be a war crime. What was seen is ain't never been made yet, so they can't write any legislation against it. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. Virgil is yes. just worryingly shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, there might be some safety concerns about if you make the if you make blood explosive if the if the if the, the substance would make blood explosive. What would happen if you cut into some deeply enough and you had like those arteri- arterial spray or something like that? Now that's a thing to see. <laughs> oh dear. Anyways, maybe it's, best, maybe it's best you stick it on, like keep it on, like arrows and whatnot. Um. Yeah. Well, possibly yes. Anyways. Um. I must say this is actually quite good sausage. Um, it's very uh, tactical thinking about this uh, fictional substance that makes blood explode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have one yet, so, you know, it's sort of an academic question, really. Like, I thought the third thing you were saying at first would be, like, it reacts with blood so that it produces an explosion the way that certain chemical compounds, you know, just react to each other in that way. Sure. But no, tr- triggers blood to become explosive. <laughs> well, that's sort of how he understood the question at the moment. First, I intended the first way, but he's becoming more and more interested in the second. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, unless there's anything else you guys want to do, we can fast forward to the morning if you'd like. Right. Unless you always want to set out. Unless you want to set off into the labyrinth at night, you have that. You do have that option. Right. I mean, right. I think we've all got uh, night vision, so. <laughs> Even low light vision. I don't know if it's night vision. Yeah, I've got low light also. I, I just realized this isn't infravision isn't a thing anymore. That's a that's a, another addition back. <laughs> Alright, so if you want if you want to set out in the evening, you may. If you want to set out in the morning, you may. Just let me know. I don't have anything else planned for the tavern at the moment. Uh, I do not have any form of uh, special vision, uh, I nah. believe. So I'm just going to get a full night's sleep. Wake up bright and early at like 4.30 in the morning to get ready to go. Uh, and uh, leave uh, a little bit of money for the damages to the bed that I caused over <laughs> <laughs> Just a little note. Sorry. Yes, sorry. <laughs> Addendum. This may become a continuing problem. Chainmail bed sheets. That's what you need, man. It used to be warm. Anyways. Or very cold. <laughs> uh, you gather. You know, it depends on the time of year, really. Um, yeah. yeah. You gather outside in the morning. Um, you do notice that none of the other adventure groups seem to be setting out yet either, so... You might be first into the into the labyrinth. Hooray! Um, and Virgil just kind of walks out. He's he's he's, he's got himself all friend, probably double checking his gear. This is very clearly his first time doing a dungeon run. He is very afraid about like <laughs> not being ready for this. All right, so I'm. Um, you can't. You you sh- you. In theory, you wouldn't be able to see the whole map, but right. I'm. I, I don't want to, like, do line of sight stuff. So you'd be coming in from over here, basically, unsurprisingly. Uh, there's a bridge that is mostly intact, actually, over the moat that, as I said, is filled with a... It, 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 maybe it's water, it was water at some point, but now it is... Well, it is It is more early enough in the morning that you can... It's, the low, light is low enough that it is very clearly glowing. It is very clearly glowing. Mm-hmm. Very slightly. It is Maybe it's bioluminescence. But it is very, it is definitively green. Okay. So as we, as we pass over the But it bridge, doesn't actually smell particularly brackish is the thing. Like you, like you would expect. Like it doesn't say smell like, you know, like really stagnant water that's gotten all icked up. 
It doesn't really smell like... There's maybe a faint... Maybe a very, very faint sort of acidic smell, maybe, but... Okay. Definitely Mountain Dew. <laughs> but as, as, we, as we pass by, there's like, like, as we pass over the bridge, is there any, like, like noticeable, like, drainage into it, like, like a source for this? Not that you not in the area, not in the area you can see. I mean, okay. Um, I will say that the you do notice that the if you look down a bit south of the bridge, down here, you can see the the the, the edge sort of the edge of the moat is sort of fallen in. It looks like plants sort like some like plant life sort of started growing down, but whenever it gets near the whenever it gets near the water, it just sort of stops and is dead. Right. Uh, plant life does not seem to like the water very much. <laughs> Okay. Um, I if you ever see a pool of water with no plants growing near it, don't drink it. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to drink it. <laughs> All right. Before Which I... means Nestes put a paywall on it. <laughs> Let's see. If this for like subjecting plants to their pay to win scheme. <laughs> Oh, I remember now. All right. There we are. All right. Well, I sort of... Uh... All right. So you are on the bridge. You have crossed over. Where do you want to go first? You can sort of see the outer wall, basically. You see what looks like two round towers there. You can see some trees. You see what looks like what looks like the, ga the gatehouse. And uh, the gates are not so much there. Uh, the walls are kind of falling apart. And it, it, this place varies... Like... I will say flatly, like the none of the buildings seem to have roofs. Um, also, uh, mm. actually, as you if you, well, are you heading in through the gates, or do you want to explore the outside a bit first? Well, we're the in. first ones here. We might as well take the easy stuff first. Let's go through the gate. Bridge will have his his crossbow, like down he's like he's he's looking through the at the corners that's you know he's 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 very just following this very large orc covering him all right cool you guys are headed to the if you're headed to the gate then i would like as you sort of start passing through the gate i want all of you um first off i want a perception check from everybody all right That is not a particularly roll, good roll by Corbin there, is it? I knew that I should just roll them th in the chat. <laughs> Virtual rolls a 12. Exception, where are you there? I was some real bad rolls today. Yeah. So Corbin's hey, going 13's to... 13's above average for me. <laughs> so as Corbin is walking with everyone, he's going to say, so, you th so I want y'all to be aware, by the way, that uh, if we get in a scrap with anything, uh, you might find out uh, certain things that may be slightly alarming at first. Uh, so, you know, when we get in the thick of it, uh, if you could please not stare at me and go, ah, oh God, you monster, you monster, uh, that would be a very good way of avoiding wounding my uh, self-esteem, okay? So no kinda... one around right now, look you in the eye and say, ah, ah, no, a monster, a monster. That's what you well, said. The... Well, I'm saying if you could not do that at any point, that would be nice. <laughs> what, you got, like, people coming out of your chest or something? So uh, seen that. Not not people, no. Like, is a person singular? I ain't never seen anyone with chipmunks coming out of their chest before. <laughs> God. <laughs> well, that just sounds wonderful. <laughs> Having shit looks around you every time you want it. Uh, all right. Um, well, Grishnak, as you we were chatting about this, you have, you, you, the one thing you've, there's definitely something, there's a smell in the air that, you know, you, you would expect uh, a place like this, you know, given how long it's been and given the thing, mm -hmm. Labyrinths. You, know, you would expect to not to you know there there to be you're expecting to find you know skeletons and dead bodies and such around because you know right duh 
but you did not you you really weren't kind of expecting to have that smell that very faint smell of, of rotting flesh very faint not like it's like particularly pungent but like that's a little odd I mean maybe there's like like a a dead an animal wandered and died and that it's it, that's running away but that maybe that's what it is hold up we not met we might not be the first ones here uh, also Eric I would also like you to give you you also I would like you to give me a saving throw So basically just roll a d20. Uh, d20, right? Yeah, just roll a d20. 10 plus mm. is a pass. There you go. Oh, and you, wow, I totally know how to type. 13. 13. Excellent. Go. All right. Okay. Uh, you also... There's something just seems off here. Like, there's a. I, if you were, I would. If you, if you, I'll put it this way. If you were a a mage or something like that, I would say you sense a very s s distinct sense of unreality about this place. But for you, but given that you are not a, you, you don't really, you're you're not a trained wizard. Something just seems wrong about this place. Just, just like hold on. There's just something weird something's, going on. Something's fucky. Does Virgil happen to hear any like birds or animals? Give me another perception check. That's a better one. That's much better. No. Like Virgil's ears automatically there, pick up. There, there you is hear definitely not, something you else hear here. No, also, put it this way: you hear no birds, no insects. <laughs> yeah. It's, is, it is it, eerily quiet. The only sounds you hear are the sounds of you guys moving at the moment. Yeah. Girls just, just looks at the others like, we are definitely not the only ones here. There's no animals. There's no birds. There's there's no insects. Yeah, something ain't right about this place either. I mean, they're not in, they're not supposed to be right, but like extra so. Well, I mean, we're here to 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 the he kind of like finger quotes loot the place. So, like, we should just keep going. We knew there'd be danger. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm 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 yeah. in the process of map making now. Okay. Because <laughs> I know where oh, I know where you, I know where you're going roughly. So. Where the treasure is, obviously. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. It's... Actually, you know what? And yeah. I need to look, take a look at my map here. Uh-huh. Sorry, this will take me this will just take me a take me a minute here. Mm -hmm. Yes, we know roll twenty is being a little uncooperative today, so Well this is not a roll twenty thing, this is me just making making a map. <laughs> And so I, I, I just, uh, all right, that's how that word looks. Okay, so it's it's basically clear out to the front this way. Sorry. And 
then I need that. And okay, let me, uh, and then export image. All right, and now I can do this. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, it's still too big for a Roll20 Not right No, now. it's not too big. I've exceeded my uploaded, my apparently my, my quota on Roll20 for the moment. Jeez. No, it's it's just I've got a bunch of different campaigns set up here. That's, that's what it is, and it's... Uh, uh, I was going to say, I wasn't aware there was a limit. Yeah. Uh, there is if you're a free user. It's not, it's a big limit, but, uh, hang on, let me just, uh, this is an easy fix. <laughs> uh, what am I going to, I should do it. All right. Now let's see if this works. Let me try this again. What? Hang on. <laughs> I'm sorry about for the delay on this. I'm I'm I missed it. I did something wrong there. Um Oh, Lordy. All right, this should work now. There we go. Okay, I just had too much stuff apparently. Mm -hmm. Story of my life. All right, and there. Stuff. Is this perk joined? All right, so. Now, now I can do this. Hang on. All right. I'm now in better position. <laughs> Copy. Whoop. 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 All right. And now we'll bring you guys over here. All right. You, I've, you should be on the right the right map now. You I'm guys are still on the castle map. map. 
I'm on the wrong one. I didn't drag you to the right one. Sorry, my bad. There we go. <laughs> I drug you to the wrong one. My bad. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I just learned some stuff out from old, older an older campaign. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, set yourselves up in the entrance way here, and I will copy over the tokens of what's going to be jumping out at you in a second. All right. Because something stuff's going to be jumping out at you in a second. So yeah, it would be. I'll take point. Let me look at my. Uh, actually, it's probably good if it'd be like this. Get that turn off first. So I don't know if this works, if magic weapon works on just the four squares next to me, or if it's all. What does it? What does eight. it say? So I can I can I can answer the question. Magic weapon, each ally adjacent to the user. Yeah. So, so even if they are to your aligned to you diagonally, that that, that is counts that counts as adjacent. adjacent yes. Yeah. All right. Good to know. So you you can attack people aligned adjacent uh, diagonally as as well as anything that is you know melee one does that way. All right. And you also count squares for stuff in range diagonally too. So okay. like something over here, for example, is three squares away from you. Yes. Yeah. Diagonals are, are every diagonal is 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 one square basically. It just count the total square distance, <laughs> not in terms okay. of don't not measuring, but number of squares. All right. Um, so when you advance forward, uh, you are advancing forward cautiously, which is probably for the wise, uh, you do see what looks like a, a bunch of dead bodies and such. Mostly he, in here, uh, you see what looks like, uh, well, uh, you see, uh, you see some dead animals, uh, which is what, uh, which is what Grishnak you think you were smelling is there definitely some dead and okay. rotting animals here. Um, what you notice is you, when you look more closely behind some, there's, there's rubble and there's rubble stuff in here. There's not, nothing significant to terrain to penalties or anything like that. Uh, you do notice that there's also a couple buildings off to the side with doors and such. Um, but uh, what happens is you notice that there are a sort of, as you sort of move forward and get a better look at things and the light sort of is you know, basically light was sort of glinting off something that was blinding you for briefly for a second, but you see what looked like, at first looks like sort of like some sort of wolf or hound feeding on dead bodies, but there's something wrong about them. About the dead bodies. No, the, the, the wolf, the, 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 the canines. Oh, I see. The canines. And uh, I'm going to put it, they're sort of a uh, doggies. Yes, they are back about here. I think. Yeah. There's one that is larger than the others. Um, I think, yeah, we'll do, uh, and also sort of stand, sort of rising up out of the ground, uh, are a, is a, is, you see a skeletal figure rise up from the bones in the ground, readying a ro sort of a broken rotting shield and a, a somewhat intact spear. And I'm, my math is correct. This should be roughly good for, this should be, this should be roughly balanced for you three. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to add all of you to the initiative tracker. No, do, do, do. no it's not that. It's, uh, how do I do this again? Hang on. I'm, Ooh, it's been, it's been, it's been a little bit since I've done, uh, Mm. Eric, your uh, HP total is not visible. Uh, it should be. Neither is yours, actually. I can see mine, and I can see. Yeah, no, no. So, okay, that means it. The two of you. Have, hang on, I, I will. I will fix. I can fix this. Actually, it's very. Yep. You have to set it so that people can can see it. Ah. Uh. Now you guys should be able to see stuff. 
I do see the things. Yes, yes. I can see it. And you can see the hit points of the baddies, right? Yep. I can. Good, yes. good, 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 good. All right. Um, I gotta remember how to add to initiative, initi the initiative tracker here. Do I double my speed when I charge, or do I just uh, move my normal speed? Uh, that's a good question that I don't remember the a the answer to off the top of my head. Hang on. I, I'm, let me get things added to the initial tracker, and then I will... Yep, yep. Yeah. Here to perform your charge attack. Chris likes to target that moves to the target. Moves up to the character's speed towards the target. Each square movement must bring the character closer to the target, and the movement must end at least two squares from the character's starting position. Okay. If something happens along the way, prevents character from completing the charge, the entire action is lost. Gotcha. And then you okay. do a melee attack or a bull rush with plus one to the roll. So you can't do anything after you do a charge. God damn it. Uh, it's just a matter of. Um, Why did I add that twice? I, as an orc, I get plus two to, to my charges. So I was wondering do I do seven squares or do I move. Um, 12 squares, because it's a big difference. That's I cannot answer. All right. All right, you should roll your initiative, and I'll roll for the baddies. All right. Open my... Journal again. Look at how fast I'm going. Oh, I need to collect pick my... There we go. I need to look at what their initiative bonuses are, actually. That would be helpful. Where is my initiative on this thing? Oh, there it is. Don't use a real command looking for a value of a select to the benote of the select. Oh. Okay. Right, where is the... Well, something's going fast. Um... And that didn't that did not that I accidentally did not add to the initial tracker. That's fine though. There we go. Oh wow, I rolled quite bad. We all rolled bad. <laughs> this has been the day of rolling bad. Okay, what are the Well the skeleton's not going very quickly, so there's that. And the rot hounds. Also poorly. All right. And now we will sort. And all right. We are in initiative order. We are now have initiative. And the famine hound goes first. All right. So. Come at me, puppy. So the 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 larger and the largest of the dog-like things looks up. You see a baleful green glint in its eyes, and its frame is sort of cadaverous and rotting almost. Um it looks up it looks up at you and makes sort of a a sort of a wet garbled sort of growling noise at you. It's sort of, it, it, it sounds like it's trying to growl at you, but it's sort of, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's rotting and falling apart. It sounds sort of wet and icky. Flummy. Gotcha. Yeah, kind of. All right. How fast is this sucker? Pretty fast. All right. Well, it is going to come. It's going. To, it is going to declare a charge on one of you. And right. Grishnak, you are in front. So, wow, it's almost as though that's why I'm there. Yep, almost <laughs> as if. It 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 makes it, it makes that sort of horrible sort of wet sort of phlegmy hard sort of growling noise. Then it makes a credible sort of howling baying noise, and comes screeching towards you at actually fairly impressive speeds. And it leaps in and tries to bite you, your snack. Um, and it is going to use... Yep. That is a plus five. All right. Uh, this is targeting your reflex, interestingly. Really? Yep. Okay. 
It's only 13. 22. Oh, look at it. All right. All right. On the plus side. All right. Take six necrotic damage. Rolled max. Um, but you are also taking ongoing five necrotic. Really? Mm -hmm. That's irritating. Yes, it is undead. Ah! And that is it for the Famine Hound. Virgil! All right. This seems like a good opportunity to use a magic weapon. Magic I got off first, and everybody else got the bonus. Yep, so magic is a good time to use a magic weapon. So <laughs> magic yeah. weapon is a good, good ability. All right, so let's get this... Uh, Target the the fat hound right right in front of us. All right, so seventeen versus AC. Uh, seven. If it hits, it does seven damage. That will hit its AC. If you mouse over it, you can see, should be able to see its its defenses. All right, cool. I did set that up properly. <laughs> All right, so that is seven damage, and everybody next to me gets plus one to attack rolls, and they do extra three points of damage for the next turn. So my end of my. Uh, next turn. To the end of your next turn, yes. Mm -hmm. magic, oh. magic weapon is a uh, very good ability. All right, uh, that is it for Virgil. Corbin. Actually, I, I could have done a minor there, but I don't. I think it's a little early to do that. Okay, that's fine. All right, I am going to. Uh, well. I guess it doesn't technically make a difference in terms of which of these I use, but I will go ahead and do this. Uh, I will use my uh, five storms ability to shift. Okay. I can shift it to squares, uh, but I'm going to only shift the one. Okay. And just uh, shift up next to Christian Eck. Okay. And uh, then I will use the ability to attack it. Okay. This is a close. There's a close burst one, but it uh, targets only enemies. So Alrighty. We're good. Uh, so we're going to uh, get the character sheet open here again. And we're going to go into here. Uh, we're attacking somebody in one. Five storms. Uh, so that is a 19 to reflex. I know it's got tough reflex, but that should, that, is, that is enough to hit. That is enough. To, it's got it's got a, it's got good reflex, but and you do 11 damage. Very nice. Yeah. No, um, you do 14 damage. Oh, 14. You're right. Plus three. Yeah. yeah you are correct, Ash. And, so I'd be down uh, to 20, down to 16. And then I am going to, since I hate this is the only chance we're going to get to use this ability anyway, uh, for this turn, I will go ahead and throw my flurry of blows on it. Okay. Uh, so that is, uh, it, it's not an attack, this stupid thing. It, it automatically just deals five damage. Uh, five damage, okay. Yeah. And uh, I am choosing not, well, uh... Just the yeah, power, actually, this I will, go, I will go ahead and actually slide it uh, to the square to its left, uh, using the ability. That to... way? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Shouldn't it take eight damage? No, it's no, not a damage because, roll. Uh, uh, it is not a not roll. Attack. It is simply five damage. Yeah. I have power damage to damage. That is correct. Okay. All right. Uh, that is it for... Oh, and it is bloodied, unsurprisingly. Uh, right. Yep. Got that sickly green uh, goo dripping out of it. Yep. <laughs> All right. Next up... Uh, the Skellington. Skellington, yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, 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 do. All right. Well, it is not. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. The skeleton, unfortunately, is not going to actually charge because it is not it. It's a skeleton. It's not that smart, and it it, it doesn't won't charge naturally. There, there. It can technically mechanically charge, but from a flavor standpoint, it's not going to for this fight. Okay. Um, 
it's not very smart, basically. The dogs are in charge because they're they're they're, 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 dogs. they're dogs. Yeah, <laughs> they're hounds. They, they do that sort of thing. In life, this was a discipline. This is a, this is a spearmen. Like spearmen don't. I mean, they do, but only when ordered to. All right. Uh, so it'll advance forward. Um, but actually, what it will do is it will throw a. It will it will throw basically. It 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 reaches down and pulls up a, a one of its bro- a broken javelin from its hip. And hurls it at uh, now. You're two of you are clo- equally close. Uh, I'm actually going to go for uh, Corbin since he just acted. Gotcha. So he is going Fair to enough. throw uh, a javelin at you. This is against your armor class. Okay. I think that will hit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, the you will take three points of damage because it did not roll very good oh, damage, and it was a broken. It was a broken javelin. It's like, uh, uh. All right, all right, Grishnak, you are up. All right, so I have an action point, right? That basically lets yes. me take an yes, extra you, turn. Right? Uh, yes, action points allow you to you you get a, an additional standard action when you spend an action point. Okay. So I'm going to Tide of Iron our puppy here. Okay. So I'll move up and then Tide of Iron the puppy. Okay. That is uh, humble. That sucks. Yeah. All right, you miss. All right, that's my that was my cunning plan. I was going to push it and then charge the skeleton, but. Hmm. All right. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so it is marked. But it is marked. It you is are correct. correct. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I should uh, save versus that ongoing damage. You should, yes. You take five take five damage and say, make your save throw. Well, I find a good th- flag for marking. Uh, for that. A green dot for Grishnak marking it. You, okay, you save. You are no longer, you are no longer taking necrotic damage. Hooray! I am no longer bleeding. Hooray for me. All right. The the rot puppies go. Uh, I don't know. How fast are they is the question. They might not be as fast as the famine hound. Uh, no, no, they're fast. <laughs> Arr- Oof. All right, uh, one attack on Corbin, and then two on Grishnak, I think. Okay. So we'll do, want to do me first? Uh, yeah, we'll do you first. Okay. Uh, chomp. An eight will miss your fortitude, I believe. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me double check them. Sorry, no. This, this, is, this is against reflex, but it still misses. That still misses you. Oh, well, that's even better than yes. <laughs> All right, Eric. Against Krishna. Why are you attacking my reflex? I have armor. Yep. <laughs> well, it, that one rolls a one, so... Uh, yeah. No. It doesn't really make sense on that one. Nope, 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 nope. Ah, chomp, okay. chomp, 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 chomp. Nothing happens. See, see, they didn't get the memo about which defense they were attacking, so they did just try and bite through your armor. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, it is turn um, of the... Uh, the, is yeah, that may we're over to the famine hound now. Yep, 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 the yep. famine hound would very dearly like to be able to get into a flank position. Mm-hmm. Because it gets bonuses when it does that. Mm-hmm. But, uh. That's going to be very tricky for it to do. Oh, yeah. It, it could fear. Yeah. It, not without not without it incurring an opportunity attack from Grishnak. And it doesn't really. It doesn't know better, actually, to be totally honest. Yeah. All right. So it is going to attempt to dive to you. It, they're not very smart. It's going to attempt to dive to a flank position across from that dog. So it steps, it moves there. Eric, you get your opportunity to attack if you'd like it. I will. Uh, we can just ignore the extra text on this. Oh, yeah. That hits. All right. So uh, you do eight damage uh, and um, stop. three because of oh, well, magic weapon. Well, never mind. Then it just dies. 
Uh, if you hadn't killed, if you hadn't killed it, it would have, it would have, uh, would have fucked you up. Well, no, 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 no. If you hadn't killed it, it would have stopped moving right there. Yeah. Right. Because that's what fighters do. <laughs> also, I guess I would have gotten an attack on it too. So, splat. Dead dog. Because it would have left. Because it would have. Uh, Technically moved. speaking, yes. When it left. Yeah. It, Actually, technically speaking, I don't think you would have gone up. Uh, no, I, th I think it when it leaves. Yeah, it's leaving a threatened square there. So yeah, it's moving into another one, but it's different than five E. That way. All right, we're done. That's yeah, yeah. I, I always get those confused. Yep. Virgil. Virgil takes a step to be next to his compatriots again, mm -hmm. and let's let's do another magic weapon at the Stilton Soldier. All right. Uh that twenty-four versus armor class, I think, will in fact hit. You'll take six right, damage. Bonk. Ow. All right. Skeleton is very, very sad. Corbin. Okay, let's see here. Ah, it's only one square size. Not gonna work. Okay. Um I will use my five storms ability again. Okay. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am going to instead use uh, my uh, Steel Wind ability. Okay. And I'm going to shift one square to the left instead of actually using the movement ability, which I can do because that's just a standard move. Yep. And then I will deploy it. This is a close blast two. Okay. So I can attack the two hounds on my side yep. with this ability. Yes, you can. So that is going to be uh, versus uh, reflex again. Uh, yep, two. Whoop. Uh, yeah, so, those both hit. All right. Uh, one of them is a crit, which doesn't matter because they're minions. Yep, but, they're yeah. minions, so they they uh, any damage to them will kill them. Yep, yeah, so they just go pa 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 pa. And the the with sickening thuds, the 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 rot hounds break and fall apart, and uh, they are they 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 are icky and gooey. They are, they are zombie dogs, basically. All right. Nice. All right. Anything else? Uh. Well, I already did my move action, right? So I don't think I. Well, can I keep on moving? Or no, you can't interrupt. No, okay. you, no, no. You you and you also shifted, as you said. Right, you're right. Yes. Even if you could interrupt your move, like in fifth ed, you can't. But even right, if you could, you did that's it. two separate move actions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. The skeleton okay. soldier will go. Okay. Uh, it will advance on Corbin. Okay. Hang on. Let me move the. Yep. Right on. Boof. There we go. I was gonna put the dead bodies over there. Um. All right. It'll advance on you. And the skeleton will ready. It's actually. Let me see here. Hang on. Does it have any special ability? Yes, it advances on you, and it tries to bat. It, try, it comes at you, sort of stabbing at the spear and battering you back with the shield, sort of at roughly the same time. It is basically doing large. The attack action seems very similar to what, what Grishnak just did a second ago. Not exactly the same, mm -hmm. however, though. Uh, this is targeting your fortitude. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. Uh, My fortitude is only twelve exactly. Right, it hits so. you. Aha! Yeah, even with that shit roll, yeah. All right, it hits you doing. Oh, sorry. This is not. This is not with the spear. It's bashing you back with the shield, basically. Okay, got it. All right, it does do three damage. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> and it bumps you back. Poof. <laughs> All right. That's on the shoulder, Grishnak. Uh, do I incur? Um, attacks of opportunity if I shift a square? No. Shifting does not incur okay. opportunity attacks. Shift. Yep. I think I see what Eric's we doing. Do... Yeah. Tide of Iron again. Oh, come on! For all the old chariot of loss. Oh, I'm sorry, Eric. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But it is marked. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, second one is an action, right? Uh, yes. 
Oh, damn, you've rolled. Ooh. Um, might as well burn my um action action search, call it? action point and here yeah, and action, action point, point second for, wind. Uh, second. All right. Yeah. Cool. You burn your action point for the encounter. You will get it back after a short rest. All right. Um, and all of my defenses go up by two. Ray. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second one's pretty cool. All right. Um, turn of the Rot Hounds. Well, um, they can get a flank that way. Whoa. Uh oh. <laughs> They're pack hunters. This is instinctual. <laughs> this is going to get for bringing up pack tactics before the stream. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Rot hounds. All right. So they come in. It's going to t attempt to gra use its, quote, grave bite attack on you. That's what it used before. Right. So this is deep. This is versus reflex. Uh, Eric, which neck first? All right, my reflex is 12. Ah. Take five necrotic damage. I just fixed that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Virgil, 18 versus reflex. Oh. Yep, that's, that's 914, so yeah. All right, take minion. five necrotic damage. The nice thing about minions, they have one hit point, and they do static damage. <laughs> Hey yes. Eric, hey Eric, you want to trade Dan partners? You you take the guys that uh, that had target four and two, and I'll take the guys that target reflex. <laughs> sure thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is it for the rot hounds. The fa the famine hound would go now, but it is very, very, very not alive. But I made him dead. Mm -hmm. Yes, we we all made him dead. Virgil, you're up again. All right. So shifting only, I only need to shift to evade an opportunity attack if I'm leaving their threat range. If I'm within it, it doesn't opportunity doesn't give if one. You, it's not really, not really how it works. Yeah, yeah. So if you do a standard move, um, and you leave a threatened square, they get an opportunity. They can take an opportunity attack. Okay, that that's one. That's why I asked before I did yep, it. No, I know. I'm, I'm telling. Yes, it is. <laughs> the trigger is leaving a threatened square. Hmm. Okay. All right, then uh, he, Virgil, will shift next to, actually, um, this, will, this will at least make sure he, he's not double flanked. Yep, that's fair. Yeah. And then he is going to um, match weapon again on the minion, this one over here. Okay. All right, that will... That will gack that thing. All right. Kill Dominion. Yeah. All right. And do you want to spend a, a surge there, uh, Uh Well, I don't or... think you need to. I think your thing doesn't make him spend surges immediately, if I remember correctly. Let's take a, let's take a look. If I do curative. Equal to, okay. So equal to a surge value and you spend in few. Okay. So you spend curative add, but sure doesn't. Nope. None of your admixtures spend surges now. Okay. That's the All advantage right, of the artificer. I'm... All right, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and uh, Virgil just quickly points his, his crossbow at Grishnak, which is probably a little threatening, and then he fires a little underbarrel thing that just hits him with some green goo. I am fully ah. charged. Button <laughs> goo, gotcha. All right, so... Get in there! So uh, you're using curative admixture, which is how much? Oh, there we go, right there. All right. Killing surge plus plus five. No, plus three. Yep. That should probably get. That so. should get. That should get Grishnak back yeah. to full health. Yep, that gets me uh, almost entirely. All right, that's all. Uh, or it, it, it is almost exactly what I needed. Very good. So yes, you need to sp the part uh, you need the when you take a short rest, you can recharge your at your 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 healing infusions by people spending healing surges. Okay, I see. So yeah, they un unlike no most healers when they do the healing thing, artificers don't you don't spend the surge immediately. You spend them in future, <laughs> okay. and the party can share their surges too, which is really freaking cool. That is really cool. Yeah. 
It's nice. Artificers are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're my second favorite leader. All right. Corbin, you're up. Okay, I am going to use my drunken monkey uh, movement te technique. All right. so, counter power. So, uh, during this movement, I move my speed plus two, and I have I add my wisdom bonus, which is plus three to all defenses against opportunity attacks. Ah, okay. So I'm going to move one, two, three, four, and that will trigger this guy's opportunity all attack right. against me. All right. So. Twenty plus four, seventeen. First reflex uh, with the uh, with the bonus to my reflex. That is a miss because my reflex is currently nineteen. Very nice. He misses you. So, ah, you so you stumble out of his way like a drunk like 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 a drunken monkey. Yes. So it's four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then I use the attack against the skeleton. Okay. This is against its wisdom. Um, okay. So here we go. All right. da, 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 da. Skeletons are very wise. It's well, well defense. guys' defenses it's, are well, it, it, roughly. It, yes, yeah. it is a soldier. It is a soldier type enemy. Therefore, it gets good defenses. Ah, uh, that is that is uh, a miss. Uh, that is bad. So, all right. Well, that's disappointing. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's a bad roll. Jeez. Okay. Yeah, sadly, you rolled a seven. That's unfortunate. I was not counting on this. Yes. Oh well. <laughs> Skeleton One, two, soldier. Three, four, five, six, seven, it attempts to stab. It attempts to stab. Stab. Uh... Oh, actually, that's going. It's going to. Re... Actually, no. It is not smart enough to do this. It will actually attack. It will attack Corbin. Okay. Eric. So that Grishnak that may. Grishnak may. May. He violates your mark. Uh, 17 hits him for 7 damage. <laughs> Very good. 23 minus... Uh, oh, you're paying attention to me. I think, actually, your opportunity, don't your opportunity guys add your wisdom modifier to the to the tit roll also? Uh, I don't know. I uh, opportunity, attacks, opportunity attacks aren't the same as... That's true. It's, it's not the... Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. You've got, fight, fighters damage, have a special... Right? Have a feature they get to add their wisdom modifier to some, some sort of defense, reactionary attack. I forget which one it is. But Ash is correct. You are under the effects of magic weapon still. So that is also true. The damage. So it, yeah, it's, it's plus one to attack. So it's nine damage. damage. All right. So no, it is eight damage. Eight damage. No, it is a uh, ten, ten damage. damage. Ten damage. Okay. Well, that's that makes yeah, math easy. Unfortunately, unfortunately, even with the plus one for magic weapon, I still missed. So. Yeah. <laughs> that will in fact bloody yon quote bloody that yon skeleton is below half hit points. Um, but it still gets to make his attack roll at minus two because it is marked by it is marked by Grishnak. Right. Which is good. Twenty plus three. This is against your armor class. It's, it's not trying to shield bash you now. Oh, okay. That uh, will be a. That should be a miss. Miss. Yeah. So yes, between being bonked by the by the big orc and the being distracted somehow, being a skeleton, uh, it, it clumsily misses you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, Grishnak, go. <laughs> All right, we're just, um, if I don't kill it, I'm flanked anyway. So, uh, rash strike. Yep. Fourteen plus one for not enough. That misses That's by a, one. Miss. Yeah. Oh, oh well. Alas, into the lack. Puppy. Um. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna chomp you. <laughs> Uh, I think it's plus four, right? Yes. Uh, I think that'll hit you. Take five no, necrotic damage. Necrotic. <laughs> All right, yes. Need to armor up my hamstrings. Yeah, you, uh, clearly. <laughs> Better sabaton. So that's what I need. All right, uh, Virgil. All right. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna take out, go for that other minion with magic weapon again. Uh, like this seems, is, seems like a plan. This, it's a good, this seems like good this is yeah. a rather good. A fifteen will hit. It's hit it exactly. 
Yeah. All right. But... So no. only uh, only only Eric is getting the benefit of this this one though. Yes. As if I tried to move through Eric Square, it would have been an issue. Not that I think I can, actually. All right, that is all I am doing. All right, Corbin. All right, I will use my five storms ability again. Shift. And now you have combat advantage. So combat advantage in this game plus two. What plus two? Okay. Uh, I could have shifted down for combat advantage. Oh well. It's all right. Don't worry about it. So I will use my five storms attack then. Okay. Uh, uh, one. That is a bad <laughs> roll. That's a one. Okay. Uh, that's all right. I will use my minor action yep. to deploy my racial attack ability, Ooh. Razor Storm. This is a close burst one against all creatures. But it's close burst, so you're only there's no enemies, no friendlies in your area. Yep. So we will go ahead and do that. And <laughs> Jesus Christ. What I'm legendary warrior? Oh so badly. <laughs> what legendary warrior was this man in life? <laughs> I rolled I have rolled a seven, a one, and a two on my last three attack rolls. Oof. So that is a bunch of misses. It so. is. All right, that's a shame. All right, well, um, the skeleton is irritated that you exploded blade. You, you exploded blades at you, M. If you know, skeleton. Yeah, you know, in his general direction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, I, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Stabbed him, Eric. You, you're oh, free. He's stabbing me. He's stabbing he's, me, or is he nope. He's Corbin? he's going for Corbin again. You missed last time, so he's not. He, 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 clearly, you're not. I mean, him. on the plus side, I'd kill. <laughs> You killed <laughs> everything here. Yeah, you fucking, killed it. Um, An opportunity attack. Yes. Splat. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so yeah, it reaches out to stab, stab him, and Grishnak's axe just comes crashing down through its skull, shattering it to pieces. Uh, right. Uh, before I forget, uh, uh, a monster, a monster. Let's get to looting. Uh, Corbin kind of adjusts his cloak, which has a bunch of spines sticking out of it now. Uh. Hey, nothing to worry about. I'm making fun of you for being concerned. <laughs> it's making... weird as shit. Don't worry. Making fun of? That you were worried about it. Come on, you're all covered in spikes. That's right proper. <laughs> I gotta wear metal coat for to, to make that happen. Oh, well, that's... well, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you for uh, doing your crushing the skull thing for that that critter could get me. Don't know why I kept on paying attention to you. That was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Turns out, yep. All right. So I'm going to briefly throw us back over to... Um, Service map here. Where do you want to go? So you guys are now sort of here. It did I actually drag you over to that thing? I did not. No, you did not. I'm dumb. I, I did the wrong button. There we go. Well, not the wrong button, but the wrong thing. There we go. You guys are roughly right. hereish. Where so, would you like to go? Well, whenever we would have a fall. Uh, oh, as an aside, also, fall. there's not really any loot. Like the skeleton has right. some, you know, like. Right. Crap! It has a, a a decrepit spear, a broken shield, and a few cra a few sort of falling apart javelins. You are welcome to take them if you would like. They are not very good. <laughs> no. So Virgil's actually going to take a look at the um, the big undead dog and like just like not do like a dissection of it, but just do like a, a quick like check on it. Like he okay. kind of suspects that maybe that green. Do you want to call that like a heel thing? Uh, you, you, could, you could make Arcana. You can make a heel check if you like. Depends okay. on what, 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 if you're looking for, if basically, if you want to make a medical examination of that, would be heel. If you want to look at the, the, what magical effects might be on it, to be Arcana. All right. Then I think Arcana makes more sense. All right. So then he, he's going to take a look at the, uh, the body. A 24. Maybe All right. 
All right, you sort of are glancing over it. You sort of casting sort of minor divinate, minor sort of you know, you cast a few minor sort of. Uh, you, you basically you, so you use magic, little bits of magic and such to analyze the enchantments on the dead body and such. Um. Okay, uh, that's actually good. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this is not a normal zombie. This is not. It, this has not been brought back by traditional necromancy. Um, there is very much a, um, how would I phrase this? Um, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Um, all right. So, uh, there is definitely something not, so it's been basically, there's definitely a sort of almost, um, it's, uh, sort of. It's sort of like a, it's. It seems to be afflicted. It seems like the body was afflicted by something like a magical plague. Like it, it, it very much is. It, it's, it's sort of looks like it's sort of you know. Been sort of you know it. There's definitely an element of. Not normal magic, shall we say, magic not not a magic that is not familiar to you. It is, it is warped and twisted and unpleasant. Like even for necromancy, and it's not like it's not normal necromancy. Uh, it definitely has sort of a sort of plague magic about it to a certain degree. But also, when I said it's a famine hound, it very much has that sort of it 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 has that sort of um, wasting. It very much it it you look at it now, it looks less rotten than it, you thought it did, and more like it's sort of its skin is sort of, you know it's 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 sort of you know wasted away from lack of food and such. Mm, so like, but it's also like you know it's very clearly dead. <laughs> like it's got the question is yeah it, yeah. Uh, I, honestly, actually is, thinking about it, go ahead. think of sort of soul like souls like soul like Dark Souls style games, dogs and such. Like you know how they're sort of you know they're clearly undead, but not in sort of your traditional zombie way. Okay, I see. Okay. Um, the, the Virgil kind of looks imagine ghoul dogs, but <laughs> kind of. It, there's definitely something vaguely ghoul-like about them. Yeah, that's actually a really good way, to, good, good, good thought, Eric. <laughs> They're not actually ghouls, but there's an element of that to them. Yeah. <laughs> Virgil kind of like, like puts away his his magical art, you know, like magnifying glass or whatever he was using to do the uh, actual uh, examination. He's like, uh, this is not a. Uh, Normal raise. I don't think this was raised by a person per se. Uh, he came back to the water. We should probably avoid it in case this is contagious. He just kind of like pokes it with like his crossbow. Reshnak's already looking over at the uh, the meat pile they're eating at. Yeah, they were eating. Yeah, like, it... this look like another. This look like one of the other teams. Uh, no, it actually did. Well. All right, so there are definitely some dead, and like sort of normal animals in there, but looking at it more carefully, yeah, there is a. Uh, it looks looking at it, there is a um, a hobgoblin, the, the the dead body of a hobgoblin in there, uh, who you sort of notice he does have a little bit of his gear still sort of surviving. He looks like he's been dead for a while, um, but he might have snuck in here like right after this place was discovered, basically. Um, and he, you, you notice there are a couple of trinkets on him that sort of indicate him as sort of a, he got sort of the traditional, uh, trinkets that like Hobgoblin Beastmasters often, often have with them. Mm. You can see like a broken sort of, uh, sort of one of those, uh, beast, ta beast, beast poles, the, the pole, pole armpit things that you use to prod beasts and train beasts right. to get them to round. And he's got a, a sort of a rot, a sort of broken whip at his hip also. Well, I think the first one's in here. Hmm. So, off to your side, there's there's a, there's a building off to your off to the south. You guys are currently facing uh, to the east, top of the, the top of the combat map. See, so you're facing east. There's a building off to your south that you can sort of see there, and there's a couple buildings off to your north, and there's a the big a big building off to the further east with the stairs going up into a up into a larger build larger building. It looks like it's sort of probably a, the sort of fortress part of the uh, the the back wall, basically. 
Also, you're, you're we... pretty sure there are a couple, like, the gatehouses are behind you if you want to check those out. Well, whenever we went into a corn maze back home, the best way to find your way through it was just to put your left hand against the wall and follow it. Eventually, you find your way out. Wait, you're supposed to plant corn in a maze? Well, you can. You know, it's a good fun for around festival time. Huh. Do you have to design the maze yourself? I mean, you can hire somebody to do it and then just plow it yourself in whatever way they draw up for you. Huh. You do a lot of farming? Oh, yes, sir. Huh. So uh, I've been... I tried my hand at farming. Just couldn't grow anything but mint. Mint? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that'll grow for you. Yeah, it's. Uh, I guess the trick is to not grow too much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That might be why you couldn't grow nothing else. Yeah, good to know. Or goes in a maze. Don't grow too much mint. Okay. It, do, it, do, it doesn't have to. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, you want to check out the uh, the gatehouses or the big fort. Maybe that other building there. Well, we should be thorough. I, I would imagine the, uh, the big fort would be where we can see down. So let's check the gatehouse real quick. Okay. So you'll investigate the big gatehouses. Um, all right. Which one would you like the, the northern or southern one first? Do the northern one. All right. First. Northern one first. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. So the northern gatehouse, unsurprisingly, that one. Why are you, why aren't you doing the thing? <laughs> um, yeah, there's uh, honestly, there's not a lot in here per se. There's a door that sort of goes off to the room and off to the north. You can sort of see there, it looks like it lead, might lead to a tower over on the other side. Um, it's sort of got broken down accoutrement of you know, the whoever sat where the, the guards that sat here, there, you know, there are murder holes along the side to deal with anybody to come coming up the coming through the entranceway that are not they're not supposed to be there. Um, <laughs> You can see sort of, you know, t ruined tables and rotting tapestries. And uh, I will say the one thing. Um, there is. I, I, I So actually, I would. Actually, would any of you really. This occur to any of you. Actually, that's a good question. Um, yeah, there's. That, that's, sort of, that's sort of what you notice, really. I mean, there's not, nothing really particularly interesting in here. At the moment, it, it's been abandoned for a really long time, and it was just a gatehouse, you know. All right. Where would you like to go now? If you want to check the, the murder holes real quick. Yeah. Did they uh, look in, inside the courtyard as well? Uh, not into the court. Into not. Oh, you mean out? You mean over here? No, in, over here. No. Hmm. They're designed. They're designed to stop people from getting into the fort. <laughs> that was sort of my thought. Soon we have. Undead and some kind of magical disease. Virgil's first thought here is like, okay, so maybe this is where they were pulled up at. They do some defense. Maybe they the things broke out, but no evidence of that yet. Possible. Where would you like to go next? I will say this to save you the time. If you check the the southern gatehouse, it's basically the same. Yeah, <laughs> unsurprisingly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I figure we'll say that one is counted as done. Maybe the, uh, maybe down here. That building over there. All right, you head into that building over there, and um, all right, that is actually, I believe that's the barracks. Actually, it is. All right, give me one second. I need to. I need to make a map. <laughs> Zoom out a bit. This will not take me too long. All right. Um, uh, do, 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 do I have a stamp for... 
I actually, oh, actually, wow, astonishing. Being acutely aware of some of the dangers of like these things gonna have, Virgil's kind of just like looking around after he noticed the plagues, like, all right, is this gonna be like back home? Do I need to get out of here right now? No? Okay. Damn it, I just screwed this up. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh <laughs> I screwed up my, my I screwed up my initial my initial drawing there. I don't think it should be that big, actually. Oh, I know what I should do. I'm, I'm dumb. All right. I need to look at the. It's not matching the exterior thing exactly, but that's fine. All right, uh, and now. Whatever, fine. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I screwed, I screwed up the, the uh, thing I was trying to do twice. And I'm like, I'm not going to fix this, this again. So. All right. Um, all right. That'll do for now. Oh, hang on. Let me just, uh, that'll do for now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to go over, de over super detailed in the map because, uh, duh. All right. Let's go. And we go to here and. All right, and make that a map layer, boop. All right, and back to here, copy. I forgot to put a door in the front part here, but whatever, it's close enough for we're gonna work. All right. Um, the door fell off. <laughs> yeah. All right. Boop. All right. Then we go. Boom. <clears throat> All right. So right. you are now in what looks like a looks like a sort of a basically a a guard post. Sort of. You know, it's it's there's. This looks like sort of a sort of a dining room. Uh, there's a room off to the south, and there's a 
what the room to the north, the door there is broken. You can see in there, there's a staircase, a rotten staircase going up to what would be the second floor. It's sort of fallen apart. Right. Hmm. Um, basically, all the doors are actually open. Um, and uh, you guys sort of walk a bit further in before before things start happening. So arrange yourselves in this in sort of the early part of this room. So in this room, what you're you're sort of seeing there are sort of you know tables like it it sort of you know it looks like the basically it looks like the room down to the south here is sort of storage. This area is sort of the common room and the bunk rooms off to the south. Gotcha. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go grab the tokens for this fight because mm-hmm. uh, there's going to be a fight here. I know you're surprised. Huh? Well, you took a moment to make a map, so. Yeah, no. Either that, you're really proud of the map. Uh, and I'm not very proud of this map. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, down in here, there is shambling towards you is a basically. So yeah, there's zombonies. There's more undead, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Why did that? Okay, there. Yeah. I don't know why it scrolled down there, but I don't care. All right. Uh, actually, that's so. Uh, All right. So there are some very some basically again these undead seem a little. The skeleton seems like a fairly like you you guys are adventure resorts. Um all right. And uh yeah, we'll wrap up after this encounter. If that's if you mm-hmm. I think it's, this is a good break point. Um there's definitely something off about these the this the zombies. Again, they don't seem like this place shouldn't have like the, given the type of zo- like given that these are very clearly like guards, right? Right. They don't like they they should not be zombies. This place has been abandoned too long for that to be the case. Like mm-hmm. okay. they should be skeleton. The skeleton makes sense. Zombies really don't. And there's definitely something unreal about them, and you're not sure what it is. Other than that, I'm going to add you guys to the initiative list. Okay. All right, and I will roll initiative for the baddies, which will probably not be very good because, you know, they're zombies, but. (laughs) Yeah, all right, so. Well, he rolled well, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the skeleton, of course, the skeleton has decent initiative bonus. It's a skeleton. All right. Uh, oh, well, all right then. <laughs> and the schmucko zombies. Better than I thought. Roll below average, so we'll live with it. All right, and now we sort. All right, uh, the skeletal archer goes first. Um, you guys sort of you, you did you the the pile of bones sort of rises up, draws as it rises up, it draws his bow back and fires a shot at Krishnak. And Grishnak, you'll be pleased to hear this is going against your armor class. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Ding. Bounce. And it clatters off your armor in- ineffectually. Ding! All right. Um, all right. So, uh, the more competent of the zombies goes. Tainted zombo. <laughs> One, two. First, I ran from you. Then. Ah! Ran. Now I stagger towards you. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So uh, one thing you will note, uh, its eyes are glowing green. Mm. Too much want to do. Yes, absolutely. Um, its flesh is definitely rotting, but it's clearly, it, you know, again, it looks like it's, it doesn't look that de- de- decrepit and such. It looks like it's actually fairly intact. Um, also, there is a, the, uh, actually, you can all give me a perception check if you would like. Uh, Ooh, as it attacks you, Eric. Septatron. 15 will bounce off my armor. Uh, that was not an attack. That was Virgil's oh, perception okay. check. Um, all right. Corbin and, and Virgil, you both notice. Grishnak, you're too busy trying to fend off. It's it, 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 it trying to punch you. Right. Uh, all right. This is against, again, against your AC. Punk. All right. So it swings a meaty fist at you, and it's a pretty hefty blow, right? But you sort of, right. you, 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 you knock it off. It doesn't do damage. Like, but it, it feels like it's got power behind it. Um, Corbin and uh, Virgil, you both know, know, can see what looks like a glow, like a very faintly glowing green sigil on its forehead. The problem is, every time you look at it, the sigil seems to change. Hmm. Like, and it seems to change depending on what angle you look at it from. Hmm. It's very weird. Very strange. Doesn't make any sense. That's it for the zombie, though. Grishnak, you're up. Uh, Corbin should probably go fast. He definitely has a higher dex than Oh, sure. Corbin, go first if you'd like. You guys are tied in All 16. Right. So do go in the order. You get to go in the order you choose. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, hmm. And I'm out of action points, right? I need to wait till I rest. Uh, yes. Oh, we you we, you I, yeah you guys sh- you guys should have taken could could have taken a short rest if you'd like to. I forgot about okay. that. It's, it's extended rest that replenishes action points. Oh, it's action. Oh, you're right. Action points once per day. You're right. That's what it is. And then the, you get more of them with each milestone, and we'll get a milestone after this encounter. Yes. Right, that's it. I've been it's been a while. Right, yes. You yes. After a second encounter you get you hit a milestone and get a, get action surge back, action point back. That's right. I'm trying to play with That's the right. I have to reread the four head rules. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we'll do this. Uh, I'm going to shift up here with five storms and hit it. Okay. And uh, okay. Here we go. Yep. As a hit. Yes, it is. 12 it's... damage. Okay. Um... And. Uh... All right, then I will use my uh, centered flurry of blows technique to add another five damage to that. It, Emma, bloodied. It is bloodied. And uh, since I. And I can now slide the target to a square adjacent to me, so I will slide it up one. Okay. Oh. Grishnak. All right. Uh-huh. Can't quite get in a position to flank him without mm-hmm. sucking a... Uh... AOO. Oh. Yeah, an attack of opportunity. But I can move there. And then I can Yeah, I'm just gonna bash strike him. Alright. Bonk. There we Not go. That's a crit. Yay! <laughs> well, okay. Even if it wasn't bloodied, uh, it is a zombie. You crit a zombie. Uh, it dies. Splat. <laughs> The so first net right net into the sigil. Attack. It was like, wait, we wanted to. Oh well. <laughs> so my, my 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 nat twenty was for a perception. Your nat twenty is killing a huge zombie. So, that's, so that's your strange. your axe cleaves through its head. Um. Uh, you hear what sounds like an ominous. Um. When it, as you cleave through it, you can sort of feel sort of a, almost like almost like a a shock when you when when the blade pierces where the the sigil would be. It cuts right through it. There's not not actually physical, yeah. 
But you then hear a sort of a distant, unearthly howl from somewhere in the distance. Hmm. Someone stubbed their toe. Hmm. Can Virgil do an arcana to see if you recognize what that might be? Uh, not during you. You can't. You can do it during combat, but you will, it requires it will require minor action at least. Okay. But uh, so not, not to your turn. So not till my turn. Yes. The zombies go. The pack zombies go. Um, yeah. Uh, one, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, four. Uh, rah. Rah. All right. Uh, two on Grishnak, one on Corbin. Okay. All right. And they have... Um, Oh, I should have placed them. Well, no, I... Oh, yes. All right. So, um, yep. This is against AC. And they are getting bonuses because... Uh, Ash, you made a really bad joke earlier, remember? You, you, yeah, I, you Remember I you joked about the pack tactics? I did. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, they get plus two. They, they've, I'm, I'm factoring the plus two in, so... Uh, and one of them will get an additional plus two. So I'll do the, I'll do the one that's got combat advantage also. So the bottom one attacking Grishnak against AC, a seventeen. That's uh, I'm nineteen. It misses. Uh, that'll miss you also. It rolled a one. Impressive. And on Corbin, uh, also a miss. Woo. <laughs> it's like aha! I've got a plus nine. Damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, Virgil, you're up. All right. Virgil is up. He's going to, because he thinks everybody else can handle these, I'm actually going to go after the uh, skeleton with magic weapon. Okay. Kertwang. Oof. That is an eight. That will not hit. All right. So nobody gets a bonus. Nope. No bonuses. Uh, Let's do the minor for that arcana. Absolutely. If, uh... A seventeen. It's not any nor. It is. It has nothing. It is clearly not. It is clearly magical in some way, shape, or form, but nothing you recognize. Okay. All right. Skeleton archer will go. Um, it'll shoot Virgil back because Virgil shot at it. All right. That's not very nice. It, no, it's Meh. not very nice. I've got a bone to pick with you. Twang! Uh, that rolls a, it rolls a two. Never mind. Eight. No. An eight does not hit your armor class, I assume. Nope. All right. Armor class is 16. Ow. All right. The tainted zombie is dead. <laughs> Whoa. Grishnak and Corbin. I will use my five storms ability again. Okay. To shift two squares. Ah. Whoop. Whoop. And I will use the close burst one against all three zombies adjacent. Nice. Uh, so it's going to be against uh, three targets. So let's just do uh, top left bottom okay. for this. Uh. uh Nat 20, 16, and 14 against Reflex. Yeah, that, that hits all of them. What the fuck? Kung Fu fighting. Yep. All right. That's more like it. Yeah. <laughs> what da, 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 da. Clearly, it's the dogs that were the problem. I just do a spinning heel kick, and a blade comes out of my foot and cuts through all their skulls. Nice. <laughs> all right. Cool. Uh, Grishnak. You got this one, right? Stomp, 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 stomp. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, technically, gets an opportunity attack, but... Yeah. We're going to shield bash him, because they can do that during a charge. Yeah, it misses you. Let's just check him into the wall. Wapoosh! I am back oh! to Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, so it's 14 damage. That's just the crit damage, Peter. <laughs> oh, is There's also another 10 on top of that. Oh, that's... Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, wait, how do crits work in... in uh, crit, no, crit, no, no, that is that is a crit damage. So okay. crit damage, way crits work in fourth ed is you do max right, damage. It, right, it maxes the damage. Right. Okay. okay. And, then if, and then certain weapons, you, you get bonus stuff. Yes. Them, right. And so, he is prone. Uh, yes, that is also true. Uh, so that is... Um, all right, he's down to 17 health. Ow. And he is prone. Just... All right, so Gr Grishnak is our enforcer. Uh, he checks <laughs> the skeleton archer into the boards. <laughs> <laughs> ah! You knocked him over. All right. <clears throat> well, the last pack, zombie. Goes for it goes for I guess it goes for Virgil since he's right there. Yeah. Oh dear. Take oh, four <laughs> damage, Virgil. Bonk. A bonk. Uh all right, yeah. And Virgil, it's your turn. We have an ash. I believe so. Oh, I was muted. Ah, ah. Uh, Virgil is going to retaliate, and he's going to hit him with an aggravating force. Ah, okay. No, he's oh. not. Alas, and alack. lack. Yeah. All right, and then he shifts. <laughs> the fair. Uh, arch skeletal archer. Uh, it sort of you know collects itself back up into a fully formed skeleton from the bones that were scattered all over the place by the shield bash. Uh, it drops its bow and draws its short sword and attempts to stab you, Eric. Stab. Have you met her scutter named Stab him? Now I'm a stab a 10. 22! Yeah! It actually hurts. <laughs> now it does much less damage with the short sword than it does with its, lo its long bow. <laughs> eh! Take four. <laughs> Ow. Eh! Stab you with his stabs you with his butter knife. Basically. The longbow does D10 plus four. I mean, like. Right, right. <laughs> Alright, Grishnak and Corbin, what are you guys doing? Uh I will uh shift two squares uh -huh. and use five storms uh -huh. again. Uh so this way I get more chances to kill it if uh, this one misses. So Fair. Uh, All right. Well, versus reflex. Well, its reflex is kind of crap, so, so uh, yeah. So. <laughs> its reflex is 10. I just, like, grab it by the throat, pick it pick it up, and slam it down onto my knee, and there's a spike coming out of my knee. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, it's a very dead zombie. All right, Grishnak. I'm just gonna, like, Bonk him on the head. Yeah, fair. With that brass strike. Uh, don't know if thirteen hits. Nope. That is a miss. It is, is a miss. It is an AC of sixteen. Dodgy little prick. Yeah. Well, it's a skeleton. <laughs> uh, uh packs up. Nope. It's uh, Virgil's turn. It is. All right. Let's try out an encounter this time. We can use. Scouring weapon on so that should hit 18 AC. Uh, that will definitely hit. Oh, my goodness! 19 acid damage. Um, Jesus Christ. Well, uh, yeah, so you fire a bolt of uh acid at it, and uh, yeah, it um, yeah, no, no, there, 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 what, what skeleton you, you dissolve the, the skeleton dissolves. Ah! It dissolves into a pile of goo. My bones! <laughs> That's all I had was my bones! <laughs> all right. <laughs> He's doing constant Skeletor uh, impressions. And he prays. I don't want to be nice. I want to be evil. <laughs> all right. So you have defeated the skeletons. Um... 
you defeated the undead in here. There's definitely something odd going on here, but you're not sure what. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to wrap things up here, I think, because uh, right. Nick is, I, I, this is a good break point. And uh, I also, like, I, while I have another encounter pre- prepped, I'd like to have, if possible, the other players available for it. So, okay. okay. So, um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we'll be back in, I think, two weeks, but we'll double-check that. I'm planning on running this game yeah. basically bi-weekly. Uh, so, that'll give me time to actually make better maps and such. Uh, <laughs> these are pretty good for, you know, I, this tool, this this Dungeon Doodler tool that I found on the web is actually really good for quick maps like this. Um, mm. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, folks, thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, as I said, we'll be back in probably about two weeks. Um, But until we see you next, guys, take care, and we'll see you in the next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, everyone.